Uh, my name is Susanna Lears, and my talk today is titled Thinking Outside the Glass Box. Um, this is based on an article that I published in Spectrum last spring. Um, and what, I, what I'm going to be talking about is library displays and um, the possibility of digitizing library displays to make them uh, more interesting. Okay. So here's my law school. And this is what we had as our faculty scholarship display. It's a big, yeah, big flat glass table and it's, you, we put the books in, we lock it up because we don't want them to get stolen. So all I can basically see is the cover um, and the name. And it's kind of dull. I mean, the only people who really look at it are the faculty who want to make sure that their book is inside it. <laughs> well, they took my mother there. <laughs> now, why do we do this? Um, one of my fellow librarians is kind of a cynic, and she says it's just for their egos anyway. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I think we do it so that our students can see what our faculty are doing. That would be one uh, goal that we have. So that prospective students and parents, when they come to visit, they can sort of judge what our, facu what our faculty are interested in. Um, visitors to the school. As my boss said, especially if they might be one of those people that gets a U.S. News and World Report thing to fill out, you know, we want them to be able to see what our faculty do and their colleagues. And there is a little bit there for their ego too. And so what we wanted to do was to make it, shake it up a little bit, make it a little more exciting. And we also wanted to be able to highlight the other activities that our faculty are involved in because they're involved in a lot of different things that aren't necessarily published. So we had, a, this was last summer, we had a public services meeting. We threw a bunch of ideas around and brainstormed what we could do. And we finally came up with the idea of a digital display. So to do that, we realized we had to spend some money on um, the stuff to display it. And um, the head of the library contacted facilities, and facilities contacted the carpenters, and the carpenters showed up one day and built this thing, <clears throat> which they put in between our, um, our regular display tables. You can see it's just this wooden box with a monitor in it. And who's in charge of the display? Uh, they decided I should be in charge of the display because, A, because I have a background in art, and also because I'm the electronic services librarian, and I, I'm, I use a lot of uh, software, and computer, I'm good at computers and stuff, so they put me in charge. And this is how I do it. That's my desk up there. I've got two monitors. One, um, one of them is exactly the same as the monitor that's in the kiosk and I can swivel it so that I can actually see what the show's going to look like. Um, I have a scanner. I have a Wacom, wait, Wacom, Wacom, Wacom. Yeah, one of those, a bamboo one, a little one for, for using with Photoshop. Um, my scanner's an old one, it's an Epson, but it's, it works fine. <clears throat> this is the computer that's in the kiosk. It's just a, I don't know, just a Dell. My IT guy told me he'd give me the specs, but he didn't, so it's a Dell. And, um, and the screen, the monitor is big. And I didn't realize when they were doing it that they were going to put it um, portrait orientation, but I decided I'd have to work with it the way it is. Okay. The software that I use, um, I use PowerPoint and um, the the screen capture I use is Print Key Pro, um, and then I use Adobe Photoshop and I use Adobe Illustrator to kind of pretty things up. Um, I did look at some other slide presentation programs, but uh, I don't, I'm not crazy about PowerPoint, but it is what it is. I mean, it does a lot of stuff. Okay. So. 
So how do I go about making the slides? Um, the first thing I have to do is get information. Um, and I have the biggest source that I use for that is we have a faculty blog that our um, director of research keeps. And he's very active in blogging and he really, he seems to get a lot of the information from the faculty. Um, I also get info from the faculty services librarian and she is the one who usually brings me the books or the, you know, the artifacts, whatever it is that I have to scan in. Um, and we also have a library liaison program and the liaisons will tell me what their faculty are doing. And finally, I get emails now from the faculty because they want something in the kiosk now that it's become popular. And then I have to make the slide. Go from a blank slide to something like, where in the world is Ron Brand? And <laughs> he travels all the time, so I kind of had fun making that slide. So I here, and let me, I'm just going to go through a couple of slides that I made to show you what I did. Um, and if you have any questions, please interrupt me, just like technical questions. <clears throat> okay, so this was a blog post uh, last week that Professor Stella Smetanka has published a new article, um, blah, blah, blah. And that was all the information I got. So I went and I got the... Um, I got the journal that the article was in, and I scanned it, and I, um, I had to Photoshop it a little bit because tech services had already had it, and they put stamps on it and stuff like that. But, so I cleaned it up. Um, that I have to pick a background color, and yeah, I, just, I just pick whatever I feel like. But Stella's kind of pink, so <laughs> she's just a really nice person. And then um, we, I have on file all of our uh, faculty official photos um, in high resolution format. They're, most of them are really hideous, but I, I photoshopped them to get the warts and wrinkles and everything. <laughs> Nose hairs. <laughs> I, they're really bad. Um, I don't know who did them. It wasn't me. Um, the lowest bidder. Hmm? The lowest bidder, yeah, I think so. Um, okay. And when I'm doing it, this is a screenshot of my uh, monitor, and I, I work on the slide in um, normal view, what they call normal view, and I also have the slideshow view running up in the corner so I can see what it looks like in the slideshow. Pick the background color and then Photoshop the journal cover, stuck her photo in. Okay, then um, I decided to fancy it up a little bit and I wanna highlight her article of all the articles that are on the page. So um, for that, this is a little trick that I use is that um, PowerPoint has clip art magnifying glasses and they're GIFs, so, which means that they're like transparent, um, semi-transparent anyway. So I put one of those in, I position it over her article title. Then I have to um, magnify her article title. So I do that in Photoshop, and I don't know if, um, you can also, I guess, use GIMP. It's a free download thing. You could probably use GIMP to do the same thing. <clears throat> um, I just, I crop the article, just the, her article, um, I open up a blank canvas and make sure it has a transparent background. I copy and paste her article onto it. Then um, I use the magic wand tool to just select all of the white background and then I just hit control X to delete the white background and I'm left with just the text on a transparent background. And then um, I save it as a gift to preserve the transparency. If you save it as anything else, it's going to have a background color. Okay, then I, then I take that and I paste it on top of the magnifying glass. Um, then I group, make sure you group everything together by right clicking, because otherwise when you start moving things around, it all falls apart. And 
then I fine-tuned it by adding a little bit more. Um, the other articles were a little too obvious, so I put a uh, almost transparent oval behind the magnifying glass. And you can do that by using the right-click menu and um, <coughs> the order button, you know, move backwards, move forwards, so you can order things the way you want them. And then I had to add some text. I try really hard not to write anything by myself because I'm afraid I'll get in trouble. So I um, usually either take an abstract or um, if, if whatever has been written has been reviewed somewhere favorably, I'll um, take, quote the review. For this one, I just went in, she didn't have an abstract, but um, I just took a sentence, a, <coughs> excuse me, a sentence from her introduction that kind of describes what her article is about. And I try to make sure that there's not too much text um, because people don't really want to have to stand and read a really long thing. The um, display is by the elevators and the elevator comes fairly quickly. So I just have a little bit of text and I read it and then <clears throat> when I put the timing on it for the slideshow, I sort of time it for how long it took me to read it. And that's the finished slide. So how long would that probably take? Um, an hour, I would say. But I've got I've gotten you know pretty You're good at it. Yeah, I've gotten fast at it. But it, it's not that difficult. Um, and yes. Do you find that the most difficult part for you is the deciding what you want to do? I've got this article and this person and this exactly. photo I have and these are the colors that are in the well, photo. Exactly. What's going to be interesting? What's my composition? Like? <laughs> so here's another one. I just got this uh, Monday. Um, and Professor Curran sent me a thing and she has two, I, two things she wants in the kiosk. She's a member of the American Law Institute's con consultative group for the restatement of the law, third property, wills and other donative transfers, and then she also just published an essay. So, dear audience, how would you do the uh, the restate the, the fact that she's working on a restatement? Get the logo from the group. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Very good. That's ex that's what I did. I mean, you know. <laughs> There's my idea. I don't know why it's flying around like that, but. <laughs> stop! Stop! Um, so there's the website for the ALI, and I found uh, the project that she's working on, and I took a screenshot. And then um, I, there was a whole list of the members group, and so I took a screenshot of that. Um, the list was too long, so I kind of edited it down. And then to choose the background color, I um, opened up the screenshot in Photoshop and found the exact matching color and used that for the background. I don't know if there's an easier way to do that, but that's the way I know how to do it. Um, you know how to do it that way next to that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Then um, I wanted to add her photo. Now this is a case where her photo is really awful. I mean, it's just, and I have tried photoshopping that thing. I mean, I spent a day once trying to photoshop it into something presentable. And do they, I mean, we retake our fashion pictures every couple of years. I'm yeah. confused. Many of us confused. <laughs> they, yeah, they, yeah. And she's, she's especially finicky about it, too, which makes it really difficult. So she has this one picture that she really likes of herself. It's the one on, the little one on the top. <laughs> So I scanned that in, you know, as best as I could, and I uh, photoshopped out the cars that were sticking out of the back of her head, <laughs> and, and uh, I just used that one. Now that's what she wants me to use, and um, I slap a caption on the photo usually, with her name, and so then I just put a, a highlighted circle around her name and her, the fact that she's from University of Pittsburgh. And there it is in the kiosk. Um, sometimes I play around with transparency and stuff too, but I don't think I did with this one. Okay. So when I started doing this, I made 15 slides to start. Um, 
And that was, that took a long time because I was just figuring out how to do it. Um, and now this is my slide sort of view. I've got tons of them, but I, I hide a lot of them. I don't show them all at the same time. Um, sometimes I even delete them, although I hate deleting them after I've <laughs> gone through all the work. But um, I, if you have about 25 showing, that seems to be a good number. People will see them all, but they, you know, they don't miss any of them. Like sometimes they'll stand there and wait to see. What's this? How long do you give each slide? Or I I um, I time them according to how long it takes me to read them, and it ranges from uh, I would say from seven to thirteen seconds. Is that the only location and only purpose you're using for it? That's the only. Although there has been a lot of talk lately that our IT department um, has been saying they might like to put it on our. We have uh, other digital displays. And they're really boring. <laughs> they, we just have like what's happening in the law school today, and there's like right. one thing, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, one thing we, we started out doing the PowerPoint slides like this, and mm -hmm. then somebody says, "Oh, it'd be really great if you could put it on the website so that there's this area, especially like in current students or faculty, where folks can go and just browse that people who know these folks." Yeah. And we were like, "Oh, I really don't want to like put a link to just download the PowerPoint so that people can edit it." We found a free tool, uh, iSpring. That will very quickly convert your PowerPoint slideshow into a uh, PDF? FLD. Oh, file. what's an FLD? Uh, FLD. It's just a flash video. So anybody who can play YouTube would be able to play that, and it allows them to skip. Oh, that's nice. And go back, and it's free. That's nice. That's nice. I'm somewhat concerned about copyright. I don't know if having all these pictures and covers and quotes, you know, sort of on the web is a good idea. I, I'm not sure. I mean, my boss is a IP. <laughs> he's an IP lawyer, and he's happy with the kiosk. But I, I, you know, there's a difference for, you know, why you know, right. So that's I've got tons of slides now. Um, What's like the life cycle? Like, how long would one person's slide be up just until something better came along? Um, <laughs> the in fact. <laughs> This is keeping track. Okay. Oh. Um, our, our secretary um, keeps a, a Excel spreadsheet because I know <laughs> that sometimes they're gonna, you know, somebody's gonna complain. So we have the date that they <coughs> that the slide goes in, what the slide was, um, what faculty what was in the slide, and then the date I remove it. And it, it really depends. I mean, if they wrote a book, you know, I'll keep that for a while. But um, if it's just they were quoted in the New York Times or something like that, that won't be up for very long because it's, you know, it gets stale. Um, and unfortunately, some of our faculty aren't very prolific, so I, I've got like, <laughs> there's a couple of them for whom I have made one slide of the last thing they wrote, and that's, that's all I got. That's true. All right, the tenured guys. And here's just a, an example of a few slides. This is a book that one of our faculty wrote. Um, it's got a great cover. It's so nice when they have a good cover, although, of course, most law books have those stupid, <laughs> bland covers, but this was a good one. Mm -hmm. This was an article that Debbie Brake had in the Harvard Journal of Law and Gender. Um, this was, uh, this guy does, is really prolific. And he was interviewed on the radio station about sexting because there was some kind of a case in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I got a little picture of a, of a cell phone sexting and, you know, mm -hmm. had his quote. Got the radio station logo. Um, this was, <laughs> this was, he was a visiting professor, but um, I love the title of his article, Why Did Tinkerbell Get Off So Easy? So, <laughs> so you know, I hope Disney doesn't come after me. But <laughs> I got Tinkerbell in there with him. He thought that was great. Um, this was our dean was quoted in the University Times, and I actually added that little insert on the bottom with her picture. Um, it's always nice when there's a good cover. Another article in a journal, not a, not a professional journal, I mean, not a law review, but a journal. Um, the 
this is what I do with newspapers. Both we had two people quoted in this one. <clears throat> it's especially I, hard for me to get things on our clinical faculty, and I just I'm always watching for stuff about them because I feel like they get they don't get enough credit for what they do. Um, here's one where the same woman, Debbie Brake, was quoted by Justice Souter, so I got the opinion and I highlighted the quotation and so forth. Yeah, exactly. Uh, even got the Supreme Court logo. Um, you should have put Souter up there. <laughs> well, well, I could still do it, you know, it's still in. Um, that's a good idea. I don't know if Souter would appreciate it, but um, he would appreciate it. <laughs> this is one where, again, Professor Harris, he's constantly in the news, um, and he testified before Congress, so I got reasonable, I had to work on that uh, excerpt of his testimony because it was really very long, and I had to try to pull something out that, you know, made sense. Uh, and this was a presentation that Professor Bayless gave. Um, I don't think I've gotten the cover for her for that journal article yet, but she's given presentations on a number of times already. So, yep, and that's it. That's it. Anybody have any questions? Well, yeah. I, I was just gonna say I can see like our law school. We go to the bar association meeting and we have a little table and stuff. So I can see a few in that because I'm always asked like two yeah. days before they go. As a matter of fact, we had a board of visit our board of visitors had a big meeting at the beginning of the year, and they had me set up two big screens and project the slideshows on both of them. So did you have to reformat that to not be that weird? Or yeah, shred? I did. It was like a, a lot of yeah, it was a pain in the neck, but you know, but you it wasn't yet right. 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 So you can repurpose. It. Yeah, so absolutely. When I saw this inspector with that, this is the coolest thing because we have bookcase that everybody walks past on their way in. Yeah. And we have no place for a freestanding um, cabinet or anything else. So uh, we had a little money at the end of the year and decided to pick up some monitors. We did buy touch screens. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to start with PowerPoint and we'll probably uh, sort of shadow box them mm -hmm. so it's not a computer and it looks like a Thing well, on the wall. as a matter of fact, I was in Tampa <laughs> last spring at, at a Hyatt, and they had that exact thing. They had this really nice aluminum frame around it, so it looked like it was kind of a picture just hanging on the wall, but it was a PowerPoint that was running through it, so yeah. And I wish that we didn't have, I, I don't like the kiosk that much, but yeah. You know. Our phase two <laughs> is to take that slide of whoever, and with the touch screen be able to say, Professor O'Hare, and then boom, pop out. Oh, that's good. This thing. So uh, it's going to be a lot more labor intensive, but I also think that it's uh, going to be higher impact. Oh, yeah. Um, we actually have a touch screen. Down, yeah. We have to put it someplace, and have we have a number of freestanding terminals, and it cannot be confused with that. Yeah. It is not for any of that. And so locking it down. Um, but when you get to content management, Technology side, sure, we can do this or up with the art. But I don't want to make that decision. I don't want to get that email from the professor saying, um, you know, I talked on the radio today, put up a slide. You know, that <laughs> sort of uh, self promotion stuff going on all the time. And right. So the library is trying to determine how they're going to manage that function. Yeah, I think. I guess because they, they report to the faculty blog, it gets filtered a little bit. I mean, a lot of it comes through the research team, so I'm not necessarily the first person to hear. What we do to, to handle some of that, who actually is responsible for the updating, our communications director for the college already knows about all these things because she's working with media, she's working with, uh, she's doing, you know, working on print publications, like the, the, the faculty publication thing every so often and all that. Photos, a lot of story, hard copies of stuff if something needs to be scanned for any special layout. And the reason I mentioned that iSpring, that's actually what she uses. It's just a plugin for PowerPoint, and there's a free version, and that's what we use. Mm -hmm. And she, as she 
gets everything ready and all her edits for the day, she actually will just click the ice cream and say export as FLV, and in a matter of 20 seconds or so, she's got um, an FLV file, and I provided her with just a, a, a shared folder that actually dumps into a spot on our web server mm -hmm. that she saves her today's update for that rotation. She overwrites, a, we'll call right. it current.flv, uh, and then every 30 minutes, our signs in the building just go out and get the latest copy of that file from, from the web server's storage. And so nobody is ever involved in actually putting the fresh content on the sign. And even if we deploy multiple signs, they always come back to get that one. Mm -hmm. so, you know, we don't have a communications <laughs> person, unfortunately. I mean, I wish, kind of wish we did. And in our IT department, and library of like silos unfortunately we also have like the, the, the signs <laughs> uh, you know the, the digital display mm -hmm. um, the feeling with this is that it has to be distinct and not just different but you have i mean just the casual person walking through and say this is something that's completely different from what i'm seeing up there from what i'm seeing on the web page from what i'm seeing somewhere else it's, it's display right it's and, a digital display Making those those choices, um, I'd love to have a communications director. I, know. <laughs> you know, uh, I haven't gotten in trouble those, yet, but oh, actually, things. I did get in trouble one time because we have we have two professors who refused to have their picture taken, and so I. <laughs> so I scanned in a a group photo, and I managed to get his face. <laughs> out of this group photo, and oh my gosh, he got so mad at me. He made me put in a picture of Bruce Lee instead of him, and then he was happy. So. How often does the physical display change? I, I change it, I, I try to change it once a week on, on um, either Monday morning or Friday afternoon, but sometimes it's so every two weeks. So the display case, you'll take those? I, I have it on a flash drive, I have it on a flash drive, and I just... I'm talking about the, the glass case. Oh, the glass case? I don't know she, when she, how often she does it. I don't do that. <laughs> so she she just throws things in there when when something comes out, I guess. I'm sorry if I <coughs> missed this, but you have maintained like a um, display or a you know, page, or for lack of a better term, or for every one of your faculty? Um, or how do you select who to feature? Well, I use I use the blog to pick who's been you know active recently, but I we do keep, but our secretary keeps a, a spreadsheet of who's been in and who hasn't, and I I have had all of them in at this point. So, but on a on a daily basis, how many are there? It, it rotates, right? Among right. The group of faculty, do you have? I usually have about twenty five slides that are okay. displaying at a time. One for each. It's not it's not one for each. They're not all in it at the same time, but. So one faculty can have three slides and three things. Yeah, I try not to do that, but in fact, somebody accused me of sucking up to the dean because I had three slides about her one time. But I wasn't really. <laughs> but well, they <laughs> But yeah, we, I, that's why we, we decided right at the beginning that we have the secretary keep a spreadsheet so that I mean we knew exactly who was in and how long. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Could so far so we haven't, but and they seem to be very happy with it. And the students really like it too, actually, because you know they don't know who a lot of the faculty are or what they do. So do you only feature scholarship, or um, we do you feature interesting things that they have done. So far, it's it's um, just professional activities, but that includes, you know, being called by the radio station and being, um, giving a talk in Akron or, you know, something like that. But so, there's a lot of things. I like Akron. I like Akron. I know Jane, isn't Jane there? Yes, yes. So, anything like that. Um, sometimes, they don't tell me stuff. Like, Recently, two of our legal writing faculty went to Oman and taught a class, and they still haven't given me the pictures. I have to keep bugging them for the pictures, but. Well, you can get pictures of Oman and talk with That's true, I could do that. Being 
but she, they, I think she took pictures of, she said that they had to teach the men separate from the women in 